Three, two, Wait, one, what? go! What? Wait, go. what? Hold on. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and I'm a messy bun teacher. I am a middle school teacher in Middle Tennessee. How many times can I say middle? Today I'm going to help you stay excited and joyful about planning throughout the entire year. One of the biggest struggles in teaching today I feel like is the lack of planning or just the knowledge of how to organize your planning because I know there are some incredible teachers out there that come up with the most incredible lesson plans, but they kind of write things down left and right or on their phone or on sticky notes and they just don't know how to organize all of their incredible thoughts. And I'm going to teach you today how to joyfully plan throughout the whole year and keep it all in one location. This video is all about planners and planning. Let's get started. I have my planner headband on. Um, this is from Happy Headband Company. And I thought it would be fun for today's video because it has pencils and paper. What else does it have on it? You've got hearts, paper, paper and, and pencils. pencils. Okay. Today's video is all about planners and planning. We're going to be talking about the differences of digital versus paper planner. I'm so excited. My name is Brittany. Yeah, I like to plan. Yeah, yeah. Plan. Yeah, yeah. Paper versus digital. Paper versus digital. Paper versus digital. So we're going to dive right into it. I actually have only used paper planners thus far. This year, I am going to be using a digital planner, and I'm so excited. I've always wanted to take, take the jump, take the dive, jump. I've always wanted to go digital. But A, I didn't have an iPad, and B, it was a learning curve, so I didn't know if I had the time to do that. But this year, I was gifted an iPad, and I am so excited to be able to use a digital planner this year. So I'm going to first show you the um, paper planner that I used last year and talk all about that because I still love paper planners. And as I'm flipping through Instagram right now, all of these amazing teachers are getting their paper planners in. And I'm just not FOMO because I'm not missing out on a, an event. I'm getting planner envy. And so I still love paper planners, but I wanted to take the leap this year to digital, go digital and um, see what that world has to offer. So I'm going to show you my paper planner from last year and what all I set up during the summer. Now, if you are a new teacher, that is one thing that I set, suggest that you do now before all of the crazy back to school year starts. Meaning if you want to make it all cutesy with stickers and stuff like that, that's great. I say put all the stickers in now. That way, all you have to do throughout the school year is put in papers or your lesson plans or standards. That way you don't have to keep up with the stickers. Now I know some dates like you finally come up a date with a field trip that you didn't know in the summer. That's fine, but get all the bulk work out. Like put all the holiday stickers in. If you want to decorate for the month of October, put all that in right now. Put all the dates that you know, like parent-teacher conferences, that um, when grade reports are due. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of something. Holidays, birthdays. Um, anything that you know now, get all that done now because you may or may not have the time to do that. I have so many of my teacher friends tell me, man, I get a planner and stickers and I'm so geared up for the year. And then by September, October, I just don't ever pick up the stickers again, or I don't even pick up my planner again. And that blew my mind because I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. I get where they're coming from because it does get so crazy, especially that fall, September, October, November time. So I don't blame them. But my huge tip is to set up your planner now. Why do you have to be like that? I love you. Me too. Thank you for helping me with this. You're welcome. Yeah. You look like a little kid. <laughs> so before I show you how I set my planner up for this year, I'm going to show you my planner from last year. Okay, so from 
when I started teaching in 2015, all the way up until, until, until last year, I used the Happy Planner, which I always found them at Hobby Lobby. I know you can get them from Michael's or on the Happy Planner website. And I always went with the Happy app. Blah, blah, blah. I always went with the Happy Planner because a it was cheap. Because I could always use my Hobby Lobby gift card. You know what I'm talking about, where you have your phone and they forty percent off. I always could use that, and their stickers were always like fifty percent off. And they had such cute covers. I loved them. And so this last year, I thought I am going to buy a bundle on TPT that I can put in a binder. That way I don't have to purchase a new planner every year. And I loved it this year. Um, so let me show you what I purchased. Okay, so this is on TPT by Joey Udovich and it was the ultimate teacher binder. And you can always get, it's like a lifetime availability to the updates that she adds every year. Um, so it was a great purchase. So I highly recommend that. I'll put her Instagram here and also her TPT store. I'll put her, um, blah, I'll, like honey, uh, and then I'll also put her just, her, blah, blah, see, you're throwing me off track. I'm sorry. I'll put, I'll also put her information in the description below. So this is what it looks like. Obviously you have to buy your own binder, but I got mine from Target. It was the real thick, um, hard cover. So, and a little plastic insert. So I could put a cute, uh, cover that she also provided on here. And so I got to customize it and put my name on there. And then I'm going to open it up to show you all the things that I used this year, all the things that I didn't really use and all the tabs that I put in because organization is so key when you are teaching, but I want to help you learn how to use it as a tool to help you focus, to help you stay on track, to also be flexible, keep those erasable pens or pencils in handy. But take off that stress when it comes to keeping all the things in one area. So that's why I love going digital this year, but I also, while I loved using this binder this last year. So let's take a look inside. All right, so before we dive into this paper planner that I used last year, I'm gonna go in the pros and cons of a paper planner. That way you can see if you're more of a digital planner or a paper planner. And so some of the pros for having a paper planner is that it's very customizable. All the ones that I've seen on For the Love of Pi or Ann Condren or from Joey on TPT um, is very customizable. I've seen thousands of different covers that you can choose from those different companies. And I know Joey on her Ultimate Teacher Binder that I used last year, there was a few that were just gorgeous. And so I chose this floral one. Another pro of having a paper planner is that you always have a hard copy. Um, you will never have to worry <laughs> if like Y2K happens and there's a digital lockdown and you can't get to your files, you have your paper copy. I know a lot of people prefer just the textual of a, having a paper copy and writing on paper with your beautiful pens. So, and, and I get that. I love pens. It is less complicated you don't have to have a learning curve for this. So that's nice. Some cons of having a paper planner, it's harder to share. You can't directly email it to your team or your admin. You have to make copies or take a picture of it. You can't use it on multiple devices. You only have this one um, binder or one notebook for your planning. You may lose it. That scares me to death. I don't know if you've ever lost your planner, but whoo. Um, so that's just a few pros and cons, but again, I love a good paper planner. I'm just excited to dive into the digital one this year, but this is the one I used last year and I really, really did love it. So let's dive in and kind of see how I set mine up. So I'm going to skip this page because it's super cute, but it has my school name on it. So I'm going to skip that. I have my school year at a glance, which is my district calendar. My class schedule, she provides this and everything is editable. So I put in my times and my different classes that I teach in here. I have my standards and it goes directly into my lesson plans. Now I did purchase the binder and the tabs, but that's pretty cheap. 
And um, what she does provide is the paper that you can print out. Now, I print it out on cardstock because I like my planner to be very durable and thick. Now, we as teachers in Middle Tennessee, we go back in late July. So I wrote a little bit down because we don't start necessarily school until the beginning of August, but the teachers go back for PD. So again, set up your little cute little stickers that you want to use now because you have time. If you purchase, you know, $20, $30 worth of stickers, I want you to be able to use them because it's fun and it also makes, you know, it makes the planning enjoyable and it also brings your eyes focused on whatever you want to focus on, whether it's an event or a birthday or some special meeting. So those are important. Yes, they're cute, but they, they do have purpose. But set them up during the summer because normally, I've done it before, my stickers will stay in there from October until May because ain't nobody got time for that. And if you do, call me because I would love to talk to you. <laughs> so again, set up your stickers now. Um, so she always gives you a full month view, which is nice, and she has them predated. And here is a full week's of lesson plans. Um, so I did get the horizontal version because I like having my classes on the left here. And yes, I put in uh, little stickers that she had, and then I had my different classes. So I did this part, but everything else she did. And um, I always like to plan either in erasable pens or pencils, because you know, as teachers, we got to be flexible because things will change. There will be a fire drill that we didn't know, or there was an assembly that we have to get to and we have to <laughs> move one of our lesson plans over or a lesson took longer than expected. So I highly suggest planning in pencil or an erasable pen. And my favorite pens, and I actually have them here, are these friction erasable pens. And they come in many, many different colors. So I love those. I have seen some teachers, and I thought this was genius, using the little mini sticky notes and actually putting them on your lessons or actually use them for your lessons and put them. That way, if you have to move something, like let's say, for instance, let's go to a week. Let's say that the roots practice and my plot lesson took longer than expected and I had it on a sticky note. I can simply take the sticky note off and put it onto Thursday. And I thought that was genius. Now, using pencil, it's fine. I'll just erase it, erase that, and put on my lesson there, which is totally fine. But I thought that was cool. So if you have a paper planner and you love sticky notes, maybe that's what you should try this year. Um, so she always has a note section right here and your place to put the week dates. And for me, you might say, well, where are your standards? Or why aren't your lessons, you know, more in depth? Well, for me, my lesson planner is more for kind of a, a, a week at a glance. Like, what big idea am I going to be teaching that day? And then normally with my standards, I like to put those on planbook.com. And I'll put that website here. Planbook.com is a really good thing because it has all of the standards throughout the nation. And if I um, type in my Tennessee fifth grade ELA standards. It's going to find all of the standards for the state that goes with my grade level, and I can actually easily access those in a click of a button. So I like having that because I know with my school, we're going to be doing standards based. We're moving in that direction. So I have to have my standards close by. That's why I keep it at the beginning of my binder and also on plan book so I can easily know what standard am I teaching today. But in my lesson book, and I might actually change that this year, I might, and I'll show you my digital one for this next school year and how I might be putting in my standards in there, because I really do feel like it will help me focus. And again, having a planner, even if you write sticky notes over here or have your phone and you write notes down, whatever it is, having one thing that will carry everything for you, your lesson plans, and I'll get to the back tabs, it truly will help you stay focused. Um, so again, it has a week lesson plan. And then when you get to another month, see, I did these before I even started school because I knew we had a PD day on September 3rd. 
I knew when Labor Day was. I knew when parent conferences were going to be and my mom's birthday. Happy, happy birthday, mama. Um, so I did these before I even started school because I knew I had time. So again, if I could say anything to you, start prepping your planner now. Okay, so let me show you the other tabs. Here's one that she has as a seating chart. Now I blurred it out so you didn't see any students' names, but having a seating chart at the very first week of school is very important. Now I know some of you have flexible seating and you can still have a seating chart for flexible seating because you can, you know, have them move around and it's a privilege, you know, not a right. Um, so I usually start them out. I probably give them a seating chart the third day of school. That way I see the first and second day who they do well with and who do they chit chat more with and who that would they be successful more with. And so I usually make my seating chart on the second or third day of school. But having a seating chart is very important. I believe in that even with flexible seating, which I wish I had the capabilities to do flexible seating, but maybe someday. Um, class roster. She has many, many pages that you can use. Again, another seating chart. Accommodations. Now, I took out mine and gave mine to my spec, te spec ed teacher at the end of the year, but there was an IEP one and you could check, you know, what accommodations that you had to give. Medical information. So if you have students with 504s, you can put this in there. That's very important to have. Um, communication. I had a student that wrote me a letter. I'll blur out his name here, but I kept that. Parent communication, when did I call? Now I'll blur out these names, but it's nice to know the type of contact. Did you email them? Did you call them? Did you text them on Remind? What was the reason and notes you need to take? Document, document, document everything. If you are a new teacher, document every single thing. Now I took out some papers from last year, but I just wanted to show you, um, I love how she had that parent communication log. Very, very important. So I just had some extra papers. And then at the back was notes. You always have to have a note section, right? I am in charge of the Sunshine Committee. So I kind of had a, at a glance of things that we were going to do. Um, and then ELA at a glance. And then um, more papers for that. Plan ahead project form. We do a lot of project-based um, stuff at my school. So this was really cool to have. And then notes. Obviously, we took a lot of notes in staff meetings and stuff. So if I could tell you anything, prep your planner now. Make sure you have your standards somewhere in your planner. Make sure that you keep your accommodations at a glance or your 504s, parent communication. That way you don't have to have five binders of everything and you just have one thing. Okay, so now we're gonna switch to digital. I'm going to go to digital planning this year and I'm so excited. I purchased, and I'll show you the cover before I dive into it. I purchased from Teach, Create, Motivate, her whimsical, simple planner. And you can find this on TPT and I'll put her little bio here. And I thought of some pros with digital planning. All right, so here are some pros for digital planning. And this is what kind of struck my eye. So in your digital planner, you can easily import files, whether that is a 504 document or a letter from a parent that you need to keep a hold of or an assignment that you need to take a picture of. You can literally take a picture with your phone or your iPad and import it into your planner like that. So quick, you don't have to make copies, very easy. Another thing is that it's less expensive. I've noticed that all the digital planners that I've looked at, whether it's on Etsy or on TPT, most of them were less expensive than the paper planners, so that's a plus. Another thing is you can use it on multiple devices. I can pull up my planner not only on my iPad, but on my computer and also my phone. If I left my iPad at home, that's okay. I have my phone with me and I can pull up my planner and look at my lesson plans for the day. Another thing, I love this feature. I know some of you are required to send in your lesson plans at the end of the year to your admin, admin, or quarterly, this is makes it so much easier for you to send and share your lesson plans with your team and your admin. All you have to do is either 
take snapshots of it or email it directly, which is really, really neat. One thing I love about it is it's less bulky. All I have is my iPad and my Apple Pencil, and that's all I have to carry, which is really nice. Now there are a few cons. You have to make sure that your Apple Pencil and your iPad are charged throughout the day so your things don't die and your lesson planner doesn't die. Um, so you have to make sure to charge those things. I usually do it um, every single night. Now I know that your Apple Pencil, if you charge it at least once a week, you should be good because the Apple Pencil battery lasts a little bit longer. Um, I also know that there's a little bit of a learning curve. Paper planner is really easy because we're all used to a calendar and paper and pen. Now a digital planner, there is a little bit of a learning curve, but from what I've seen, if I go onto YouTube and I watch another teacher or another person on YouTube that shows me their planner that's on their digital platform, I can kind of visually see it and it helps me learn that new platform. Okay, so this is my iPad and I'm gonna link my case and my Apple Pencil case in the description below, but I absolutely love it. I got it on Amazon and I will also link my cute little stickers that I got from Coffee and Fifth on Etsy. So this is actually, you can use it as kind of like a, a computer case. Um, it doesn't have a, a mouse, but it does have the keyboard, which is really cool. So the cool thing about it is that you can turn it around what? and use it as a tablet, which is really cool. Okay, so I am in my iPad. Thanks to Callie Danielle for the adorable background. It is still June as I filmed this, but... Go check her out. She just has the cutest things. So I'm going to open up Good Notes, and I'm going to go to my Teacher Planner folder, and I'll show you the stickers in a, in a little bit. But again, my Teacher Planner is from Teach, Create, Motivate, and you can get that on TBT. So this is what her cover looks like, and I thought it was super cute. I just love the colors, and she has all these different tabs on the right. So I'm going to read them to you just in case it's too light for you to see. There's class info, student info, calendar, lesson plans, week at a glance, month at a glance, parent info, notes and list, and miscellaneous. She also has all the months of the year at the top, and I love these quick buttons down here. If you need to access the front cover, click there. Blank pages, table of contents, which I use that a lot. And then she also provides some really cute digital stickers. So in GoodNotes, you need to make sure if you wanna use your Apple Pencil as a mouse instead of a writing utensil, you need to make sure that this button right here is turned on. It has the pencil with a little circle around it. That way you can use it as a mouse. Now, if you want to write, so let's say, for instance, let's go to table of contents and I want to go to my lesson plans. I want to write something in on Monday. You need to click this button again and you have the pencil with the uh, line through it. Click on the pen. You can choose what kind of pen. I usually like the fountain pen. Click what color I want to do. Let's do a purple. I like to zoom in because it kind of gives it um, better space for you to write. And if you want it to be thicker, click on the thickness. Now that's a little too thick for me. So let's say, ooh, I didn't like that. I'm gonna click on the eraser. Click on the pen again. I like the medium one. Scroll out. Awesome. Well, I had a parent contact me, so I can either go on the line right here with the tab parent info, or I can go, oops, see, I was using the Apple Pencil as a writing utensil, so I didn't mean to do that. You All you have to do is click this back arrow or the eraser button. So again, make sure your pencil has that little circle around it so you can use it as a mouse. Think of that as like little mouse hole and that's why you would click on that to use this as a mouse. So I wanna click on parent info. See the cute little doodles that she had? All right, so let's say that I had a parent contact me on Monday, September 8th. So again, I'm gonna click make sure that pencil is open and I have this and let's say I wanna do the brush pen and I want to do it in black. I'm gonna zoom in. 
let's say it's September. Ooh, that's a little too thick, so I'm gonna go back. Right there. September 8th. Their name was Trisha. And I love this. So you can circle, which one was it a letter? Was it in person, was it email, or was it by phone? So I'll say it was by phone. And then you can take different notes. Again, having all of this in one location is so important. You don't have to set up anything with this, which is really nice. She has it set up for you. And it's just so nice to refer back to it. So let's say you went to a... Um, so let's say that you went to a staff meeting and you bring this with you and they said, hey, did that parent ever contact you? And you can say, absolutely. Click on that button. Boom. You have the information right there. Um, she also has student info, which is super important. Uh, birthdays. So you can uh, number their book and their textbook, which is nice. Uh, books checked out. So if you use your own classroom library, you can use that. So student lockers, I like this because my cubbies, I have numbers on them. So I'm going to give them a number and put their names down. Now, obviously, I have more than, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. More than 13 kids, but there's more um, forms here. Uh, so let's see, medical needs. So this is great for 504s. Small groups, I love having this. So if you have an RTI small group, you can write down the skill that you're working on that day. The date, all the students and notes. I love having that. Data, this is super important. Student data. So if you have a CFA or a benchmark, you can write down all of their grades and their growth on here, which is nice. Grade book which I am not sure if I'm going to be using a digital grade book um, within this. I may or may not. I might try it out. Um, I always like having my grade book online within my platform that we use in our district and then a paper, um, a paper grade book. So we'll see if I'll use this. But she does have this if you want to use that. She has a section for RTI, which is so awesome. What intervention are you working on? What student the date, the skill, have they had any growth? Are they falling backwards? So very neat. And then there's a section for the calendar. Um, I love how she has these really cool motivation posters before each month. This one says you are loved, you are worthy, doing enough and capable. Very powerful. I love that. And so she has a whole month. Now it's not dated, so you would have to go back and date it. Um, and so you can write out your big events. February. Here's another one. Your value doesn't decrease based on someone else's opinion of you. I thought that was really cool. Um, so for all of the things on the side, you have your class info, class list, schedule, student info. We went through that. And then uh, notes and lists. Notes and list is so important to have. So you can write down your notes, click on that button. Let's say I want to do a ball pin and I want to do this teal. Nice. And if you want to highlight that, let's say I want to highlight in this bright pink right there. And it kind of keeps your line straight, which is nice. So I love the stickers that she uses. And you're thinking, what? Well, how can you do that digitally? Well, I'll show you here in a second. So she, uh, Teach, Create, Motivate, has some really cute stickers that's provided with this planner. She did so good on them. I love the colors. I love these little sticky notes. But let me show you another lady I found on Etsy. It's called Bloom Planners, and it is the cutest little sticker book for your digital planning. IEPs, final exams, makeup day, don't forget little sticky notes, quizzes, tests, early start, today's goals, school starts, school ends. Look at these cute little planners up here. So let's say for instance that I wanted to use 
this eat, teach, and sleep sticker. So what you're gonna do is click on this button like you would as if you were writing. Instead of clicking on a pen, you're gonna click on this little lasso. As soon as you clicked on the lasso, you're gonna circle around, it doesn't have to be perfect, around your sticker, hold it down, and you're gonna hit copy. I'm gonna go back to my planner, and let's say I want to go to, and remember you gotta click on the little mouse hole, July, look at that, unsubscribe from doubt, toxic relationships, comparison, strangers' opinions, I love that. And I want to put, so you already have one there, <laughs> first day of our teacher. Let's say I wanna put it right here. Hold it down, click paste. Boom, then you can resize it and put it where you want. Easy as that. You don't have to rip off a sticker, place it. Oh, it's crooked. Now I can't take it off. It's easy peasy. If you want to move it, you just circle around it and move it where you want, as long as you're in that lasso place. So let me click on... Again, this is what it all comes with. I'm going to show you real quickly, because this video is probably way too long, um, my lesson plans. Now, obviously, I don't have anything set in stone yet, but as it looks, because again, we don't know necessarily when our, uh, what next year is going to hold, but as of now, we know that their first day of school is going to be August 1st. And so I know, and I'm going to talk more about that um, on the first week of school, I know for a fact that I want to do everything I can, whether it's icebreakers or an escape room or games, to make that first day about my students. And so um, I want to make sure that I set aside time to introduce myself, but save those expectations and those rules and those procedures for the next day or even the next day. Um, so what I'm planning on doing for my lessons is, so I'm going to get my little pen. Let's say I want to do the brush pen. I will probably, since I'm going to be doing more standards focused, I'm probably going to put all my standards in this little notebook. Well, how am I going to do that? Okay, well, I'm going to go back up here. You see that where that blank pages is? I'm going to use this for my standards. I'm going to actually just take a picture of my standards, whether it's online or whether it is my standards from last year because they haven't changed. And honestly, all I'm going to do is going to click on this little mountain picture here, insert a photo because it'll pull up all my photos from my camera. And I'm just going to put my standards in this little blank but that way, I only have one location for everything. If I can teach you anything, I hope and pray, whether it is a paper or whether it is a digital planner this year, that you use this as a tool. Yes, you want it to be cute because you want it to be fun and just make sense for you. But I want you to be able to use it as a tool. Because I promise if you use it properly and you use it for all the things, your IEPs, your 504s, your parent communication, your notes, your standards, your lessons, even if it's just bullet points or little sticky notes that you do, whether it's in your paper or whether it's in your digital planner, put everything in one location. That way you're not pulling your hair out and forgetting where you have put some certain things. I highly recommend these two planners that I've talked about today whether it's the Ultimate Teacher Binder or Happy Planner or Ann Conjure or whatever it is, or whatever digital planner that you have chosen. I really like Teach, Create, Motivates. It's really cute, simple. Simple is good so you're not overloaded. Um, I hope that this will be helpful for you. Comment below if you have any more questions. Oops. Comment below if you have any more questions on any of the things I talked about today. When you plan, treat it like a budget. Don't feel like you have to be tied down to your plans. You need to treat it, treat it like a budget. As you go along the week, if you have to make some adjustments, that's okay because you are there for your students and what's best for them. So you might not do exactly what your teammate is doing because you know that with your students, 
I need to move this lesson for the next day, or I need to take a second day on this lesson because they need more review for this certain standard that we're talking about. Treat it as a budget, just adjust it, massage it out, whatever you need to do, but use this as a tool. Don't let it collect dust on your desk this year. Whatever it is, whether you're using a paper planner with little sticky notes and moving them if you need to, or whether it's a digital planner and you're actually trying it out this year, but use everything that is provided with your grade book or your notes, your parent info, your IEPs, your 504s, because if you have everything in one location, that 100% is going to help you stay on track, focused, and organized this year. Thank you again for watching this video. Oh my gosh, my foot is asleep. Tickles. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope that you were able to find what planner suits you best and that you can actually use the planner and all the accessories throughout the entirety of the year. And I'm so excited to see how you guys use your digital or paper planner. Make sure to comment below on what you prefer and what you plan on doing this summer to help you prep for this next school year. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel yet and click that notification bell so you can get alerts on other videos coming up. Again, this is a part of a brand new series all about organization. So you're going to, get, you're going to want to check out those videos soon. And please give this video a thumbs up so it can reach other teachers to help them as well. I hope you have a great day. Again, my name is Brittany from The Messy Bun Teacher. Life can be messy, but there's always joy to be found. See you in the next video.